1887, died in 1978. He was a biologist and an educator. He was the first black American to receive a PhD in botany and helped found both the NAACP and the Federated Colored Catholics. So we're talking about Thomas Wyatt Turner today. I've got a picture of him right here. Okay, personal life and education. Thomas was born in Hughesville, Maryland. His parents, Eli and Lenny Gross, were sharecroppers, and he was the fifth of their nine children. When he was eight, his father died, and he was sent to live with an aunt and uncle, James Henry and Rose Turner. Turner worked in the fields, but also attended Episcopal local schools from 1892 onwards, after Catholic schools refused to admit him because of his race. From 1895 to 1897, he attended the Howard University Preparatory School. And this is one thing that is just a blot on Catholic history that I'm just so sad about. But that um, Catholics in America, especially the Catholic hierarchy, really went along with a lot of the racism that was going on. And, you know, it's very sad because the church is universal. The church is for everybody. But in the early... Um, Nine, um, sorry, late 19th century, Catholics were still refusing blacks uh, to get into schools, to become priests and things like that, just because they were going with the flow. And that should not have happened. So, you know, I can admit when my people are wrong, you know, my uh, Catholic brothers and sisters, they messed up on this one, but <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, he stuttered at Howard, um, sorry, he studied at Howard University, gaining a uh, bachelor's in 1901 and a master's in 1905. In 1901, he attended Catholic University of America briefly to further improve his scientific knowledge, but had to leave because it was too expensive. Look, even back in 1901, college was too expensive. We're still dealing with that now. It's no fun. Okay. In 1921, he was awarded a PhD in botany by Cornell University. Um, the first black person to gain a doctorate from Cornell. The thesis was entitled The Physiological Effects of Salts in Altering the Ratio of Top to Root Growth and came from work done with Otis Freeman Curtis during summer leaves of absences from his post as dean of Howard University. His first wife was Laura Miller. In 1936, he married Louise Wright. He died at the age of 101, wow, in 1978, 36 days after celebrating his birthday. And let's talk about his career. After graduating, Turner headed to the Tuskegee Institute, Alabama, at the request of Booker T. Washington, where he taught academics in biology for a year. From 1902, he gave service to various public schools in Baltimore, Maryland, for a decade, except for a year between 1910 and 1911 at the St. Louis High School in St. Louis, Missouri. From 1914 to 1924, he served as a professor of botany at Howard University in Washington, D.C. And if you didn't know, botany, which is also called plant sciences, plant biology or phytology, is the science of plant life and a branch of biology. A botanist, plant scientist or phytologist is a scientist who specializes in this field. So basically, he studied plants, which is pretty cool. And he was a professor um, of plants at Howard University. Okay, so um, uh, Howard University had provided courses in botany since 1867. He was the founding head when the Department of Botany was established in 1922. He also served from 1914 to 1920 as acting dean of the Howard School of Education. As well as biology, he felt that the mentorship provided by teachers and faculty had a vital impact on students' careers. Turner was initiated as a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity in 1915. From 1924 to 1945, Turner was professor of botany and the department head at the Hampton Institute, which is a private historically black university in Hampton, Virginia. It was founded in 1868 by black and white leaders of the American Missionary Association after the Civil War to provide education to freed men. Okay, while working at Cornell University in 1918, Turner worked for the U.S. Department of Agriculture 
in Maine, where he examined potato fields. The American government consulted Turner throughout his career about agricultural problems. Under the auspices of the United States Secretary of Agriculture, Turner worked as a collaborator on Virginia's plant diseases. In 1931, Turner organized the Virginia Conference of College Science Teachers in 19. 31, which is kind of a, I don't know why they like double did that. That's weird. And served as president of that group for two terms. Somebody's calling me. Um, Turner was also an active member of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and of the American Association of Horticultural Science. He retired in 1945 due to glaucoma. Now let's talk about rights and civil liberties activism. Turner was also known as an activist who was a staunch defender of black rights and civil liberties. His activism, curiously, has overshadowed his many scientific accomplishments. So this guy, uh, Turner, was a great uh, botanist, and he knew all about botany. He was a professor of botany for years and years, for dozens of years, for decades, really. But people mostly remember him for his civil uh, rights activism which tends to happen. You know, one thing you do gets overshadowed by another. Moving on, in 1909, he was a founding member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, as the first secretary of the Baltimore branch and was also active in promoting the rights of blacks to vote. He continued this activism after his appointment to Howard University. In 1915, he organized a citywide membership drive for the Washington NAACP. He was eventually honored with a lifetime membership in the NAACP. Turner was active in Catholic organizations and in societies for the advancement of Black people. He remained a loyal member of the Roman Catholic Church despite suffering discrimination. And like I said, I can call it when I see it. I am a faithful Catholic. I love uh, the Catholic Church, Holy Mother Church. But she messed up in this instance, particularly in America. And the church in America has had many, many problems. I'm going to go into that in my church history series. In fact, I'm going to make a whole separate series about the Catholic church in America because it's a whole nother beast. Um, but this is one of the things where they really stumbled and really dropped the ball, which is relations with black people. And it was kind of a go with the flow. Well, this is the way people do it in the South or whatever. Instead of saying what the church has always said in the past in other countries, hey, whether you're a slave or free or black or Indian or whatever, you deserve to get the same respect as everyone else because God is looking at your soul, which doesn't have a color, doesn't come from any country, it isn't in chains or whatever. You deserve the same respect. You deserve to get to And, but um, Turner stayed faithful to the church, even though they were discriminating. He wrote of being asked to move to the back of the church when attending mass in St. Louis in 1926, which is just very sad. From 1915 to 1935 alone, and as a member of the Committee of 15, he lobbied the Catholic University of America to admit black students. And yes, at this time, the Catholic University of America was not admitting black students. It's very sad. This, I mean, this is 1915. It's not that long ago. Um, and for the Catholic Church to provide high school education for black Catholic children and a route to priesthood for young black men who had a vocation, specifically the Josephy Fathers at St. Mary Seminary in Baltimore. So it was very difficult to become a priest if you were black. It was very difficult to go to Catholic schools and Catholic universities, and even to just sit with everyone else at mass. This is a very sad time in America and a very sad time in the church. And I'm so happy that things have um, gotten much better. But as I said in a previous video, um, we still have this problem where there are certain black, quote unquote, black churches and if you're somebody like me and there there isn't one of those around here and I'm not really interested in that anyway, I just want to be a Catholic with every other Catholic. But when I go around, it's like just me and maybe two other black families and like 200 other families. Uh, you know, we have lots of Asians, Hispanics, whites, but it's not really that many black. And I think the reason is because the church really dropped the ball with black people 
um, for like over 200 years in America. They just didn't know how to evangelize, how to treat them. And it's just very sad. Um, even though in the church's writings, they've always stated the way to treat people. And in the Bible, it says it, you know, treat others as you want to be treated and go forth and baptize all nations. It doesn't say baptize everybody, but keep some of these people over there and some of them over here, you know? So the problem isn't the church itself. The problem was that the people in the church weren't effectively, um, you know, living out the faith, which happens all the time. And a quote that I like from a book that I can't remember which book it was, but it was saying that, you know, the church is supposed to be the rock. You know, Peter's the rock on which the church is built. The church is a rock where we, you know, we're not built on sand. We want to be built on rock, right? But the rock can be a strong foundation or a stumbling stone. And the word in, I believe it was Greek or Latin, I'm not sure. I think it was Greek means the same thing. It can mean a steady rock or a stumbling stone. So it's very interesting um, how people in the church trip over the rock that is supposed to be their foundation. And that's what happened in this instance. And I am going to do a lot of history about that in the future. But moving on, in December of 1924, Turner founded and was elected president of the Federated Colored Catholics, an organization that he said was composed of Catholic Negroes who placed their services at the disposal of the church for whatever good they were able to affect in the solution of the problems facing the group in church and country. In 1976, at age 99, Turner was awarded an honorary doctorate by the Catholic University of America. In my opinion, a little too, a little late. Uh, they should have allowed him to become a part of that university when he was a young man wanting to get a degree. Instead, he had to go to an all-Black university. He had to go to Howard University, which is also a great school, but he really wanted to, you know, stay within the church and do everything within the church, but they just weren't allowing it. And I commend Turner for staying faithful, to, um, even when people in the church were trying to be a stumbling block and trying to uh, basically making people want to leave. And that's why I think there's not as many Black Catholics as there should be at this day and age. Publications. Turner Thomas Wyatt um, wrote the studies of the mechanism of the physiological effects of certain mineral salts in altering the ratio of top growth to root growth in seed plants. See, this is just geeking out on botany stuff right here. And he wrote that in 1922. And um, in 2018, some Marilyn Nichols edited um, a book, which is a memoir called From Sharecropper to Scientist. So um, you can actually check that book out from Sharecropper to Scientists if you want to know more about Thomas Wyatt Turner. And now let's talk about his legacy, and then that's going to be it for today. His papers in un unpublished auto autobiograph are among the Turner papers at the Moreland Spring and Research Center, which is in D.C., and it's located on the campus of Howard University. From 1976, the annual Dr. Thomas Wyatt Turner Award is given by the Secretariat of the National Office of Black Catholics in Washington, D.C. for work towards equal rights. In 1978, the Hampton Institute named its new natural sciences building Turner Hall, and the Cornell Graduate School created the Turner Kittrell Medal of Honor for alumni who have made significant national or international contributions to the advancement of diversity, inclusion, and equity in academia, industry, or the public se sector. The first award was in 2017. Lots of resources here. Um, what I would suggest if you want to know more about Thomas Wyatt Turner is to check out his um, autobiography, uh, his memoir from Sharecropper to Scientist. Check it out if you want to know more. But basically, who was Thomas Wyatt Turner? And he's got a nice photograph right here of himself. He was an American rights civil activist, biologist, and educator. He was the first Black American to receive a PhD in botany, and he was a professor uh, at many different universities for decades, and he helped found both the NAACP and the Federated Colored Catholics. He fought for Black Catholics' rights to go to school, high school, and university, and to even just to sit in unsegregated churches. Thomas Wyatt Turner was a great man. And what we can learn from him is that, you know, education is important. Education can really change a lot of things in your life. And he was able to get 
to to do so many great things because he put education as his focus. He put education first. And even when he was turned down many times, he continued and he just made it work. And by the grace of God, he remained Catholic, even with difficulties in the church. So another thing we can learn from him is that um, sometimes you are um, going to face challenges with your faith. And sometimes it's going to be people. Sometimes it's going to be situations. And what you have to do is stay faithful. And um, even though things are bad, sometimes you cannot. It's just like St. Peter said, where are we going to go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. So you can't leave. There's nowhere to go. You know, you have to stay with God and you have to trust God. Okay, so um, that's it for Thomas Wyatt Turner. And uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day and stay holy. God bless. See you next time.